cool buff archetype it's going to be as you can see some prizes there's the one off flittle there's also the single prize bonnet and a shuppet in there but it's playing four shuppets so you still have access to these bonnet ex so it's going to be that more defensive approach that we saw initially from uh, polish players i believe so and this is going to be another intricate one and will change up the matchup quite a bit i think yeah this is not your parents god of worry x list we do see uh, oh we saw trekking shoes and another trekking shoes and a spirit tomb and another Look trekking at this list. shoes yeah, this is nothing like a normal card of one. <laughs> <That's laughs> Seeing trekking shoes. Oh, and yeah, the ultimate went down for the trekking shoes that wasn't actually played, and it seems like an energy has come out. So it's a bit of a weirder list here. Uh, Bayonet, of course, single energy does a bit of damage, but stops your opponent playing item cards next turn. And a Spafra is the one that punishes for lots of energy being attached so and also makes your opponent's attacks cost one colorless energy more so there's some weird stuff in here it's still gardevoir mm. but there's just a lot of extra tricks that can be played in here as well i think this is going to be much more of a cat and mouse game trying to use the bulk of your gardevoir ex and your bonnet ex and hope that they can sponge hits from some of these future pokemon and then even dealing 190 with gardevoir can be capitalized on with brilliant alakazam that's in the deck list and we get some really sneaky <laughs> mid turn <laughs> knockouts maybe even playing around the heavy baton could be something to watch out for here as magnus has already started to find some basic pokemon there's the early shop it so identifying that removing some item cards from marco is going to be a huge deal here because firstly a lot of the acceleration comes from the form of electric generator but also a lot of the searching cards as well count catches a big a means of gusting in the future box list as well so definitely feels like the bonetti x is going to be important here yeah marco is going to have one turn before that bayonet can come out and start attacking so it's going to be really interesting to see how far you can get two cards drawn with the mu ex here there's a guard of war ex and a Ugh. curlier no oh, there's one routes down i mean it's unlikely but marco could have a hilarious turn here in ko the routes i'm it's, not sure it's not that unlikely to be honest with you we you need to heal your generators with oh sorry with iron hands yeah that is unlikely oh yeah <laughs> the maridon I'm, I'm thinking maridon's just fine here take out the one rolls and i think you're in a pretty good spot oh yeah the, Mar the maridon should be able to carry yeah. very easily you just need you're dreaming bigger than i am right? oh, i'm dreaming big here joe i love this <laughs> i mean maridon hits 40 and accelerates two yeah. energy from the deck so either a future boost energy capsule and an iron crown yeah. or two iron crown will get the k oh yeah that rouse is going down uh, yeah sorry I, I thought you i didn't realize you had bigger plans in store as we see an early techno radar here so immediately we are going to get some access to these future Pokemon, and I think there's a crown already put to the top of the deck for Marco here. Yeah, there is indeed. The question is, do you go two crown to get guarantee the KO, or do you want to get an Iron Hands down to maybe, you know, start accelerating to it if you hit those electric generator? That is the question. Is that a second? Yeah, he's eyeing up a second Iron Crown. Actually, eyeing up three, but you can only play two, <laughs> at least from the Techno Radar. Yeah, I think there's already an Iron Hands in the hand. But if you do get two, it means like if you bat on something up, maybe you have multiple targets or you can, well, he's going to go for the better <laughs> artwork, Iron Hands. There you go. I love that. I've got Iron Hands on the table. No, that's not the artwork I want. I'm going for the special illustration rare. So we do have one crown. You're right. There is a crown in hands and there is a heavy bat and that yeah. probably changes the maths there. So here is your first electric generator. Double hit <laughs> off the generator. Oh, the dreams are live, Joe. Well, here you go. Thank you very much, Mike on the table there's 14 lightning energy in marco's list and then just the one copy of psychic energy so you do have good odds on these generators i think iono might be the only supporter in hand yeah i know. could be content with just attacking here with the maraud and holding iono really depends on the read that you had from magnus I don't love it. Magnus' hand is actually terrible right now, so this Iona might be saving him. It might, and the Rouse has 60 HP, so you could, the KO was already on yeah. the board. So I apologize, I was doing the Master 70 HP Rouse. It is only a 60, there is a 70 that sees play, but it's not yeah. that one. That is the 60. So, chooses to play the Iono, might be bailing out Magnus, Magnus here, oh, but... massively, yeah. <laughs> did we hit a generator off of that? I didn't see it. I think that's what Marco is digging for. This is a poker gear. Uh, no, no, I don't see it. Just some switching cards. We've got a future booster energy capsule. I'm surprised we didn't see the second Iron Hands come onto the board. Maybe a little bit concerned about some trapping plays that Magnus might have his, up his sleeve, especially with the threat of Bonetti X. Yes. Another mission might be reducing your hand size of your 
uh, trainer cards as well, because Poltergeist also does a 60 multiplier for each trainer in your hand, so Marco has to be aware of Benethi X's second attack when there's a shop at one energy on the bench already. Absolutely you do. There's another Iron Crown coming down here with a future boost energy cap. No. Yeah, that yeah, is a future, future boost. Yeah. The shininess was putting me off. So we do get the KO on the route, so that's nice and easy. Oh, just double checking what it does. It's one of those cards, we all know what it does, be like, it doesn't it doesn't really do that. Oh, it actually does. That's annoying. I think also just checking retreat cost, because oftentimes Magnus will look to slow the game down and trap, especially with there are two copies of Calamitous Wasteland in the deck list for additional retreat cost on basic Pokemon that aren't fighting types. And of course Bundle is a water type, so it could be a trap target if Magnus wants to slow the game down a little bit and uh, build up the board, which I think might be the priority this turn. I do see a, a Calamitous Wasteland in hand already. Not much draw, though. Can they use Mui X plus this Cypher Maniac this turn? I think they can reduce their hand size. There is a Counter Catch alive as well here, so it could be Counter Catch plus Calamitous, the Iron Bundle here, oh. and then Cypher into two of the ideal cards here. You've absolutely nailed it there, Joe. We do have, of course, Marco took that prize turn one, so that turns on the counter capture, brings the Iron Bundle active, and I think Baynet is probably going to be the choice, of course. The Rouse only just got played. That's not going to be evolving. And this could slow the game right down. Marco had the big aggressive start he wanted, and we do actually already have four energy on the Iron Hands by virtue of that Maraidon's mm. attack. So that Iron Hands is ready to go, but unfortunately, the, the Iron Bundle's not going anywhere for now. There's a Calamitous Wasteland. Although it is important to note, Future Boost Energy Capsule just gives you free retreat. Yes. So it doesn't matter how much it's put. It can have a retreat cost of 52. Right. And it would be put down to zero with Future Boost Energy Capsule. So... Yeah, Although it doesn't we... say zero, it says no. So you basically take all the maths out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's the idea. This is a really cute combo. The Cypher Maniac, I imagine, is mostly in the deck to combine with Refinement, but it is going to work with the Mew EX quite nicely here for Magnus with a one-card hand. Can immediately access. I'm certain Benetti X one of the choices. Oh, yeah. Got Not be. sure what else really required. Maybe just another supporter for next turn to be a little safer. But yeah, looking like a really great way to slow this game down a little bit. And this is going to turn off item cards. Remember, there was a new ruling a little while ago. Tool cards are no longer items. They used to be. They are no longer, which is huge right now because Baynet has just turned off item cards, but tool cards are still fine. And that's what Marco really needs right now is that future boost energy capsule because that's realistically the only way you're getting out the active, except... Uh, no, that's the only way you're getting out of the active. Yeah, there's no stadium bump you can use, so you can't attach and stadium to get rid of the Calamitous Wasteland. That's going to be sticking. So Marco now, it depends if how patient you want to be with this hand. Do you just want to build up another Iron Hands manually on the bench and just have multiple threats established? Or do you want to go for the Professor's Research? Yeah, it's going to go a little bit more patient. Just attach and pass, knowing that you can attach and retreat next turn. Going to see the first refinement from Magnus here chose the uh, Curlia as the second choice from the Cypher last turn. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That means you're drawing extra cards as you go, which is always a nice advantage. That Mew is putting in a bit of a shift so far. If you play one more card from your hand, Mew's going to be fine, but you don't need to. Just doing a little bit of damage manipulation right now with the Radiant Alakazam. Yeah. It's going to be really important to be a little bit off, and then you can use an Alakazam once again later on in the game and avoid that heavy baton. That's such a huge tool uh, for the future box decklist to retain this massive energy cost for your Iron Hands. And getting around that via the Radiant Alakazam ping pressure from Painful Spoons is going to be a priority for Magnus here. Yeah, it really is. That Radiant Alakazam, if you're only doing a little bit of damage with Bayonet, using Alakazam to move it around is just fun, frankly. <laughs> it's such a cool uh, concept here. I've okay. seen it in person. I've played against this before as well. And there's so much flexibility with this damage counter moving. And even just with the combination of Bayonet, EX, Gardevoir EX as an attacker, and Mew EX, that's already like a lot of different options you have available to you. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do. We did see the second energy go straight onto the Iron Bundle there, so that now can retreat, even with that Calamitous Wasteland in play. Mm. So the question now is, do you want to bench the Iron Hands? 
do you want to play the professor's research or do you just want to retreat and attack and if you do attack it probably has to be Maridon because Iron Hand is not getting a KO on that bayonet as it stands at the moment and yeah the Maridon is coming up and if you're attacking with Maridon do you not want to bench a second Iron Hands to start building up energy yeah, on if that? If Maridon's coming up you're certainly going to build the next Iron Hands it also just means you can get rid of Bundle, which I think is huge. <laughs> That's just been trapped, so you want to remove that from play. And you just have removed that from play. It's going to force Magnus to put a new Pokémon into the active. And actually... Ooh, everything has got lower HP than Baynet that's sitting on the bench. We need to do some Mew maths here. Mew is absolutely in range here. It's not even that difficult. It's free Iron Bun It's free Iron Crown. Yeah, it's just going to go with the shop here. The safe, giving Marco the one prize rather than falling into any chaotic turn <laughs> with Iron Hands <laughs> getting really creative. Of course, Marco did like already retreat the bundle, so couldn't easily get back into the next no. Iron Hands. So Magnus probably expected the Maridon coming in, but even just poking that you into range of a three prize knockout later is uh, scary as a prospect. So Marco is just going to continue to sit on his hand and build up a secondary attacker. I really like this choice because he's probably aware of the fact that the heavy baton may not always work this game. So just manually getting another Iron Hands ready to go as you take a second prize of the game is huge. And in theory here, it's just Gus twice for the win. You've got, I mean, the counter catcher probably isn't ever going to work, although <laughs> no. you play two of them. But you've got Prime Catcher and Boss's Orders. Yes, Bayonet turns off Prime Catcher, but you've got Boss's Orders and wait for a turn without Bayonet. Bayonet is not really doing a huge amount of damage. And that's your prize map at this stage. There are good Iron Hands targets, two attacks, and you win the game. Very true. Magnus is under a lot of pressure. Hasn't really got much of an engine established. Has to look towards getting another Curlia. Has to make more of this 30 damage a turn. Is it going to be possible here? Still working on quite a low hand with some valuable resources. Iono, Countercatcher, and Professor Churro all in the hand right now. One of the important points to note, there isn't a good target anymore for Gusting. Iron Crown has already got the future boost, so it's got yeah. free retreat. Both the Iron Hands can attack, the Maridon can attack. This is where you want to be if you Marco. You don't have a good option to trap me. I'm going to be able to do some stuff. So there's a 30 damage from Baynet. Items are still turned off. But do you even really need items much at this point? Yeah. I think it would be nice, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but you don't need them, you've got stuff to do. Yeah, I really like Marco's patient play. He's been holding on to this research for a long time. He's thinking about the maths here for Miraidon. If just a 60 poke is fine, or do you want to finally bench another Iron Crown and go for a research here? 60 sets up the arm press quite nicely for the following turn. So I think this is decent pressure and the right choice. Yeah, you don't actually need to amp you very much onto the bayonet. Really, no. your, your prize map here is two two prize knockouts. Yep. So arm press this and then amp you very much something on the bench. And that Mew is very much in range. Free Iron Crown will get that Mew with amp you very much. And you don't need to bench the Iron Crown now. Just bench them on the turn, you're going to use it. For sure. Marco's, like you say, patient play and really putting Magnus under a lot of pressure. It is entirely possible Marco wins in two turns from here. Magnus is holding on to Professor Churro, and I imagine and that's the guaranteed supporter that he'll play this turn to basically just pick up the Bennett and re-establish another Bennett EX this turn to undo that turn. But again, only getting 30 damage in. Like, yes, we can do some shenanigans with Radiant Alakazam, but you're still really lacking a huge amount of pressure here. Is there any other disruptive plays we can make? You're just giving Marco time, and if Marco's yeah. got time, you're going to get draw into those future boost energy capsules. You're going to get energy onto your iron hands. Eventually, you're going to draw into something like your one boss's orders. You can stash your prime catcher for later, because sure, you can't play it under Bayonet, but you're not seeing someone like an Eri come down to get rid of it. You can hold it in your hand and wait for later. Interesting. It's going to be, yeah, spreading those twos around <laughs> onto the Iron Hands. And again, just poking 430. Okay. It's going to say that's 10 damage short, but they have gone and fixed it. So another Professor's Research in hand here. And it's awkward. You don't really want to drop that Iron Crown and have it as a gusting target, but you don't want to discard it because you're not really playing Pokemon Recovery. That's not what this deck does. So it's an awkward situation, but it does look like we've just seen a, a poke here. Are we going to start using these professors research now you can get an arm press in i think you do you saw that yeah you saw the booster you saw the discard bar being moved yeah i think we're making space we're making space <laughs> we're for the iron crown, crown to come down and if that gets played you're gonna professors research yeah because at that point you are desperate to try and find a future booster energy capsule yeah Just we need one for the active doing the maths there but arm press is not 
It's not doing it at the moment. You're hitting 180. You're 10 damage short with arm press. You will need a second Iron Crown to get the KO. Also debating this Lightning Energy attachment. Does it just go onto the Iron Hands? Yes, it does. So now we're threatening both attacks from both Iron Hands. And it is going to be Professor's Research. Obviously, the Switch cart is not live, thanks to Benetti X. We are just going to have to see seven fresh cards, and we're looking for those Future Boost Energy Capsule. Do we see one, Ross? Yeah, yes. we do. We might even see two, actually. Which well, if, is, if you can hold on to yes. one, that's also fantastic. There was a second, and yeah, that's good, because that Iron Crown could be trapped in the active. Having one for that is absolutely huge. And here we're going to see an arm press for 200. That is going to get the KO on Bayonet. Marco is just two prizes, one KO away from ending this game. And this is looking very, very nice. And the Heavy Baton is still on there for now. I don't know how relevant that's going to be as we go on, but Marco has played this beautifully. There are still no good targets <laughs> being dragged into the active. Well, the Iron Crown doesn't have the future booster yet, so if Magnus can pull together a counter or prime catcher into Iono yes. and just hope for the best is really what I'm looking at this turn. Yeah, that's the only way the Iron Crown becomes a target is if you combine it with yeah. Hand Disruption. And to be fair, Magnus does play four copies of Iono here. Mm. So that is something you would expect to be seeing sooner rather than later. I think probably the better right strategy... Right now, in fact. Yeah, I think the best <laughs> strategy is just attacking with a Guard of White EX this turn and putting this Iron Hands down to 20 remaining hit points. I think that's going to be the line for a Magnus. Just hope your Gadawai oh. EX is big enough and that Iono does the trick. Two professors <laughs> research off of the Iono. That is not bad. <laughs> no. I mean, you'd rather have one and like something else, but it is better than having none. That is great. It means Marco is going to have some cards. So, what can Marcus establish? It looks like there was an EX in hand. I think, yeah, there is. Yeah, Magnus just drawn into the Gadawai EX, so no jeopardy there. Oh, is that Prime Catcher at the end of the hand as well? Might be. I think you're happy attacking into the active here, though, and just allow Marco items for a turn. Because you need to start doing more damage than these 30 prods. Oh, yeah, the you 30 is not too enough. many prizes by this point. Marco is getting ahead on the prizes. <laughs> There's your guard of wild, lovely special illustration rare. It's doing 190, if I remember yep. correctly. So it will leave Iron Hands with 20 damage remaining, and that is where your that's where your radiant Alakazam wants to be. Yeah, and you're just hoping this is the biggest Pokemon possible, and hoping that Iono does the trick. We know that Marco's holding on to double Professor's research. <laughs> I could easily just find Prime Catcher to close out the game here. Yeah, Prime Catcher will do it. Boss obviously won't do it if you have to play the Professor's Research to find it. But all you need to do here is find that Prime Catcher and you are rolling. That will be game one. But even so, you're, you're still up by a lot of prizes. Now, you're going to lose a two-prizer before Magnus attacks next turn. Mm. You're going to lose a mid-turn KO, essentially. But that's... I really like this damage is lining up really nicely. If Magnus just hangs on for this one turn, you can do the Alakazam, finish off the active, and then KO the other Iron Hands all in one sweep. So Marco really has to find the answer this turn from the research, I think. Yeah, and this is what Mark Magnus has been really building up to, trying to make sure that little bit of damage can actually become relevant. There's the professor's Oof. research. Prime Magnus catcher. <laughs> he just had a look over and saw the double research. I would not be. Do we have the prime catcher for game? No. I don't see it in hand. Marco Pla can at least play out some item cards, finally thinning the deck of these. He's been locked for a long time now. Does have to think. Yeah, you can see, even though with such a big prize lead, still has to think about a couple things. And you're pro here's the problem. You're probably losing the Iron Hands next turn. Both of the Iron yes. Hands next turn. So you need to find something. And it's not the end of the world. That Mew can still go down. But you need a decent attacker. And it might yeah. even be time to start thinking about doing a big attack with Maridon. It yeah. does 160. We, we attached Psychic this turn to that Maridon. Exactly, Ross. So we're trying to get in that sparking strike range. That could be another great way to close this game next turn. So. It's locked into attacking the active here. No access towards that prime catcher. So we'll just be swinging into the Gardevoir, kind of at the mercy of Magnus for next turn, expecting the both Iron Hands and eight energy going off this board all in one go. That's hard. Which is a but... huge swing and four <laughs> prizes, but is at least got the Maridon fallback right now. 
And it does look like that's essentially the game at this yeah. point. If Marco can get a two prize KO with that Maraidon, probably on the Mew, but maybe on the Gardevoir, then that is going to be the game for Marco. If not, Magnus has actually built this up quite nicely. Just enough damage to make the Alakazam get stuff into range. Here comes the oh, whiff. Here comes the whiff, Joe. I think we just want to play these cards out oh, yeah. so that you never draw back into them. There's the chance that Magnus relocks you with Binette, and also it looks like Iron Hands is not part of your plans anymore. No. So we're just going to play these out. Would be nice to get maybe an energy. I mean, you want the third energy onto Maraidon, and it's a card that isn't Prime Catcher to draw into next turn. So still would have been nice to fit a tiny bit. And we're actually even playing another Iron Crown. The theory here is I've already got one on the bench. Yeah. Might as well have another. Why not? I agree. We're going to be swinging with the arm press for 220. 220 is what I'm making it. 160 plus three Iron Crown is mm. 220. So it's back over to Magnus, has some great plays available, but it's also about trying to weave in some disruption. We have to gust up the benched Iron Hands so we can attack that one. We probably have to hand disrupt, <laughs> and we have to move this damage guard of what out the way at the very least and find the second one. So that's a big checklist this turn, and we don't have a huge amount of draw to get there. No. It's, I mean, it's an option. A couple of turns ago, a little of Magnus was in a horrendous position. Being able to take four prizes with some disruption and give yourself a chance is way better than where Magnus was a couple of turns ago. But like you say, there's a big checklist we're trying to get through here. You need the guard of while, you need the hand disruption, and then you're going to get those prizes. It is worth noting you're going to take a double KO, or you're going to take a two prize KO in the middle of the turn. But spoiler alert, it's going to be a shop it in an energy. It's not going to be great. We have Prime Catcher, we have Professor Churro. So you basically just can't hand disrupt Marco here. That's the only fear factor for you at this stage. It's going to be a KO here. Magnus does have one Iono prize, but wasn't able to hit it. No. It was, as predicted, the uh, Psychic Energy in the Shop It. Wasn't a great prediction. People generally take the bottom <laughs> prizes first. And I've got a prize cam here, I can yeah. see. So maybe you just have to not use Iono and churro up your active plus prime catcher, rebuild your next Guard of White EX and swing with that, and basically cross your fingers that Marco cannot access prime catcher or boss's orders. It, it's a big, it's a lot to dodge, really. Yeah, it really is. You've got prime catcher ready to go. Here comes the churro, which is both going to heal the Guard of War and then give you a Guard of War in hand to evolve your bench curlier and then you've got that attacker and obviously guard of wire accelerates energy so the energy is fine the guard of wire is fine the attack is happening yeah the question becomes can you stop marco we know there's a prime catcher in hand so that iron hands is coming active none of this is a surprise to us the question is can marco end it on his turn and if not magnus has a route to win this it's remarkable how good this turn is from Magnus, and he can still end up losing this game. <laughs> He's been making this game plan very early on, intricately using this Radiant Alakazam to have exact math for this exact turn, and still he's in danger of losing next turn. There's the prime catcher. It will be a huge four-prize swing. Magnus trying to put himself a turn away, but simply has to dodge. The combination of an energy plus either Arvin or Boss's orders for Marco will win the game here. I think we only have Arvin, so do we see energy? We maybe see energy, Joe. We've got Arvin, and we've got a... No. Uh, we've got the electric generator. Well, generator can't attach to the Maraidon, of course. It's a dragon type. Oh, so we, we can't just get there. We, we don't have the easy combination. This is tough for Marco now. We don't play energy switch in this deck, no. unfortunately. His hand is just a lot of Pokemon. Oh. Arvin can help, but it's not going to win the game immediately. You kind of need, yeah. You need a tool that will give you an energy, and that, that doesn't <laughs> exist right now. I wish there was. <laughs> or at least Marco does. What oh. do you do here now for Marco? This is tough. I honestly don't now know. Now your best case scenario is just hope that Magnus stays out of range of a knockout. There's no damage scattered around your board anymore. So Magnus, in theory, is limited to 190 from Gardevoir EX or that random amount from a Bennett. So there's no guarantee that Magnus wins next turn. Marco's going to use this Arvon. But a boss to KO the, a boss to KO the Maraidon is as good as a win. That will essentially take away the only attacking option Marco's sure. got. So a boss to the Maraidon won't win instantly, but that will... Well, maybe you have to bench an Iron Hands then and even use the generator on that, perhaps. How much energy is left in deck at this point, though? Do we well, even we've, have lost, enough? we've lost at least eight, probably more from retreating bundles. So we've lost ten, maybe? I don't think... Yeah, there might not even be enough. You're right. Let's see as he fans through the deck. I, I only saw a couple of spots of lightning. I'm not sure there's even enough energy in the deck. There's, there's one, two. two. Yeah, two lightning energy, that's it. Not even enough for an arm press. 
and yeah. we, you don't, this is not a deck that plays recovery cards. You play four of your Pokemon, or, you know, mostly, <laughs> and you play a ton of energy. You don't recover. No. You go fast at the beginning of the game. No super odd in the deck list. So I think a Gust and KO them a ride on would essentially checkmate Marco at this point. Magnus not to know it's guaranteed, but yeah, yeah. that's the situation that we're at right now. It's definitely where I'm going if I'm Marcus, if I'm Magnus. Yeah, and I, I think just... he'd be able to spot the play as well here. <laughs> I think so. We've been sitting at a record of 8-1-2 in day two of a special <laughs> but, event. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can see that. But Magnus doesn't have much draw on board either, so there's no guarantee he can no. boss next turn. There's no Curlia, there's a Mew, but a hand that's too big to use Mew right now. Yeah. There's no Greninja that we see in a lot of these decks because you've gone for the Radiant Alakazam. So, you're benching a bunch of Pokemon. All you're really doing here is thinning out the deck. None of these Pokemon are particularly useful. Yeah, we can't play that generator because there's no valid targets. I think that's what Marco's just checking up here. Yeah. With no lightning Pokemon on the bench, you cannot play that card. Nope, it's not. And we're worried about that because, of course, Benetti X's damage scales based on this. So, Marco is out of range so far. There's, you know, the Benetti X will deal 180. Oh, going into the active. With the Maridon, this um, is dangerous. But if you're not getting a KO here, surely Gardevoir can yeah, just... There's only one Psych Energy in the deck. Pressurizing this, it's a huge chunk of damage, but your next Maridon still may not be able to get over the line there. Is Marco just thinking it's so likely that Magnus attacks you that maybe just trying to avoid boss's orders isn't enough anyway, and we're trying to attack t uh, twice with peak acceleration? That might be where we go here. You're doing 120. So you're sitting there now at... What we got? We We're got 100. One, yeah, it was 140 because there's also a future booster attached. Oh, so I said we'll get so that. So up we'll to 180. Win. And then oh. next turn we can deal 120. So maybe it's not that's as... that's 300, right? Oh, we have a future booster in hand as well. So we can do 140 into 140. And with the prep damage that Magnus had to use last turn, we can still win next turn as Marco. OK, so maybe that's the play. I was yeah. I was not thinking there was another future booster plus we're right on available, but there is. It's still a bit of a combo, but that will actually work. There's still a hope for my boy Maride on here. <laughs> I mean, to be clear, there isn't an energy in hand right now. There is an energy on the... Oh, there's an energy on the Maride on. Yeah, we've just peak accelerated to it. And there's a future boost in hand. Yeah, we're just lacking gust now. So Magnus has to move this Gardevoir and still take a knockout. So we might still be getting risky with our Benetti X this turn. <laughs> oh, this is where it's getting... Or we getting... could be getting risky with Mui X and copying Sparking Strike. <laughs> that could also do it. We have to move this Gardevoir, we know that much. Yes. Gardevoir cannot stay in the active. That is 100%, because that is going to get KO'd. So now it looks like we've got Bayonet Poltergeist. Ooh, we're taking risks. 60 <laughs> damage for each trainer card in your opponent's hand. You need two to get over the line with Maridon. Yes. There's a future booster age and... Yeah, there's, an, there's, I think, three uh, trainers currently in oh, hand Oh, but you Marco. know there's one because your opponent tried to play... Well, they asked. I don't yeah. know if they flashed it to Magnus, oh, but yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know there's one. So you're only actually hoping there's one extra in there. Yes. That makes a big difference to this. You only need two and you know you're hitting one. Yeah. This had to be Magnus's play because using that Mui X means you can still lose to a future booster. So it had to be the tankiest Pokemon available, which was this Bonnet. Oh, I kind of love Poltergeist is going to come in here. Go down to one prize, and then Marco is looking to find a boss's orders or an Arvin top deck for their own prime catcher again. Will win the game. Ah, here's the Professor Churro that has been denied from Magnus. I think that puts him in a really safe position now. Yeah, that Turo is absolutely huge there. The Mew's got 180, and the Maridon, I believe, actually tanks out at 160. No, 140. Yeah. And that's where well, all the crowns are here, and the attachment is here. You can. Well, yeah, there's it's 80 Iono plus 40 now. plus 20, so that's 140. That's not enough to KO the Mew. Can we. Hmm, Iono and attack with the Maridon because there's no Gardevoir EX set up, so you can go into this Maridon and poke the Bennett and hope that Ionoing yourself low enough is going to put you out of range of Poltergeist. I think that's the play we're making here as Marco. Yeah. Magnus gets one, Marco gets two. There's two energy on the flittle, so a Spafra could be an attacking option just as something that's got enough energy to actually sponge. Yeah, that is the flittle. I think Marco needs to draw another card here. I think he's only at one. 
Does he only have one in hand right now? He should have two. He, he definitely two should remaining. have two in hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we the go. He well. took the prime catcher, Joe. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is getting close now. Oh, this is getting so but Drawing good. that second card has given him two item cards. Oh no! <laughs> two trainer cards. So that means Baynet's going to KO and the game's going to be over. But, but Magnus will be taking a massive risk. You, ha you, can you play? Can you play a trainer card? What was the second trainer? It was Arvin, so that's not a playable. And it was Prime Catcher, which you need to win you, the game next turn. I think we're just. I think the judge is just debating because I think Marco retreated before seeing the second card from Iono here. I think that's the debate right now. Uh, there's some sort of discussion going on, but I think that's the situation. I think Magnus is in a call my bluff moment with Poltergeist. Incredible. Oh, that is. This game has got a lot more interesting than it looked like it was going to be a minute ago. Oh, that second card, both of them being trained. If one of them is a trainer, you basically win the game. Yeah. Because you've got your prime catcher and you're out of poltergeist range. But you're not out of poltergeist range, but you're not allowed to play the Arvin and you can't play prime catcher because that's your win con. Oh so, boy. Well, oh it looks like we're back to the action. So Marco looks like he is playing the prime catcher as to just not lose on the spot. But if you take a one prize KO, if you bring up the Mew, you have to find another Gust next turn. But the Calamitous Wasteland might be trapping this Mew EX as well, don't forget. Oh. It typically has zero retreat cost, but the Calamitous Wasteland may be working against Magnus here. That might be an issue. We just got word, by the way, that an attack had been announced. A warning was issued. We carry on with the game. Nice and speedy. Shout out to the judges there. So, Calamitous Wasteland, will it keep that Mew in the active? We've got a lot of damage on. And we did... I said you couldn't use the Prime Catcher. You kind of had to use a Prime Catcher, but now oh, we see no. an energy to retreat the Mew. It's Spaffra EX! I I told you as Bafra was coming, Joe. The Psy Ball coming in. Exact map to KO the Maraidon. Right what a nail-biting close to that set. Oh, that is not how it looked like it was going to go in the first couple of turns. But Magnus pulls it off with a KO from a Spafra EX. And it was always kind of like this flittle's on the bench. I'm putting, don't worry about the flittle. Don't look <laughs> at the flittle. No one knows there's a flittle coming. But it was just there ready. And oh, the perfect maths. And you, you've got to feel a little bit hard done by there because you had to play your prime catcher a little early because of the poltergeist and you had the ko with the poltergeist and you kind of gave the game away with your uh, you know basically telling your opponent mm. that you had your electric generator in hand yeah and there were so many you know you, you with the future booster energy capsule was there an opportunity to maybe go more aggressive in the early game with those professor research mm. maybe get a couple of attacks off a turn or two early i don't know but it did feel an awful lot like that was a game that really could have gone either way. Yeah, I, I think Marco played pretty perfectly, to be honest yeah. with you. I, I just think Magnus drew off that Iono <laughs> to two, and it, or to one even, and was just had two great cards. Still had a Mui extra, but that was it. And Marco found some really nice, neat lines there. Having to play the prime catcher, thanks to your opponent's stadium, giving you that line of play is an awesome thing to spot in a high-pressure situation. I think Magnus even said, as we panned over to him, that he just went, crazy game. <laughs> that was Peter's <laughs> mouth to Marco, because that's certainly was. We have 18 minutes on the clock here, but fortunately, because Marco can yoink additional prize cards at times, we should still have enough to close out a game two at the very least. Yeah, might not be able to see quite such a patient game plan to start off from Marco here sure. as we saw in game one. Might need to go a bit more aggressive. We've got two INO prize, Professor Turo. Nothing which gives me too much pause there. And it looks like we are going off here. And yeah, Marco is letting Magnus go first because you want that turn two aggression to try and get cheeky X extra prizes or even just start the KO with Maradon like we saw in game one. But also, playing an Iono to put your opponent down to one card, they draw for turn and they end up with an energy to retreat and then a spaff for the KO. The B2 card combo to win. Like, yeah. that's got to be annoying. <laughs> At least make me Mew EX to draw the, yeah. into those outs. Make me yeah. use the Mew, right? <laughs> Magnus kicks off our game two here, has been forced first by Marco, but has the buddy buddy pop in to start establishing some basics. We saw in game one, he liked to lead out with the Benetti X just to sort of put some pressure pokes in play to allow you to use that Radiant Alkazam. I imagine that's still going to be on the agenda. Yeah, we are seeing Roltz plus Shuppet with the opening search here. There's also an Ultra Ball that's being debated right now. There's not much draw in the hand again. I think you're holding on to Benet plus Curlier. 
So you, and there's no Mui X, that's in the prize cards. And that was helpful in game one to get some additional card draw. Oh, that one Mew in the prizes could be a pain. It's quite low down. We expect it to be one of the first two taken, but it's still in the prizes. So you've not got access to it yet. But we're probably going to see a similar kind of game plan. Magnus won game one. We said this all weekend. You don't need to win both games. If you win game one and game two doesn't finish, you win the matchup as a whole. So playing disruption, slowing that game down, making sure your opponent isn't able to get to six prizes, that is a potential win condition here. But Marco is going to be going probably more aggressively than in game one because the clock is a real factor here. So we're over to Marco's, drawn an iron crown for the turn. We've got an iron O in hand. We've got an energy. We can at least get the KO on Ralph. So KO is now on the board. Yeah, we're happy with that. You're at least starting to pressurize. We're just hoping from Iona we can find something good to attach to. So otherwise, we're peak accelerating to ourselves, I think. Not ideal. You want? Oh, there's there an iron go. hand in hand. And is there no radar? Nest I ball. I think we're in good shape here to start filling the board of these future Pokemon. Again, you might want to be a little bit more cautious. Yeah, we're actually going to get rid of a Nest Ball here with Techno Radar. Just so that we are keeping in mind the fact that Magnus can get sneaky with trapping, as he did in game one. Problem is, you've already got an Iron Crown down. That's already an option. Mm. So, one of the, I mean, one of the best things you can do here is just keep a future Booster Energy Capsule in hand rather than attaching it so that whatever gets brought into the active, you can immediately retreat rather than attaching it and letting your opponent just go for the other one. Yeah, in a lot of other matchups, that Banet is entirely safe for making these trap plays because you know your opponent's main switching effects are item cards. But the fact that this future archetype gets to play a tool card that in the recent rule changes, <laughs> is allowed to be played under item lock. They're now a different classification of card entirely. It means you're a lot more nervous about weaving in this Benetti X. Yeah, you when still they can get hit so easily. Oh, we absolutely can. When they when they made that ruling where items and uh, tools are no longer mm. items, that was a monumental shift in the game. Not for every matchup, not for every deck, but it means little interactions like this get completely and utterly changed. Now, Marco did take the first prize off of that route, put the two energy onto the iron hands, kept the other Pokemon in hand for now. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to play them until in, until you're about to play a supporter. Magnus does play for Iono, though, so it can come back to haunt you. Yeah, I think it was mostly just play the item cards while you can, sort yes. of situation, while still being mindful of Bennett's coming out. And I think that's already established for Magnus. But we still have a big draw here from the one Curlia that he can evolve into. We've seen the turn attachments. I believe there's Bennett EX in hand. It's the counter catcher. Yeah, it's the expected yeah. outcome. You still have to make the play. Is it Benetti X or is it just... Oh, no, it's not Benetti X. We're just having to flip coins. It's a head split from the enveloping shadow from Shop It here. 10 damage if heads. They can't play any item cards from their hand next turn. But we do have the future boost energy capsule. Ah. So you are actually <laughs> item locked by Bayonet, even uh, by Shop It, even though you couldn't get Bayonet. Yeah. But you did get the future boost energy capsule. However, there are free energy onto an iron hands. I mean... Oh, was there this just no Curlia in hand? Maybe it was the Flittle, and I was just assuming it was a Curlia. <laughs> this is so because annoying. Magnus definitely would have drawn cards if he could. Oh, absolutely, because you're looking for that bet. It's really awkward. What you really desperately want here is a... You want an electric generator to try mm. and get another energy, but you can't play that because <laughs> your opponent... How annoying is it that the one turn they whiff Bayonets, they still flip heads as well, oh, but Marco goes up by two prizes here. This game is still very... It's 13 minutes. That is a long time for this, this future deck. This is a deck. huge opportunity for Marco. Magnus seemingly on fumes right now. Has the the uh, Lost Origin Bonnet in hand. Oh, picks up the Iono. Oh, that could be nice. But then again, Marco just played a Future Beast Energy Capsule, so that's going to be the card he's looking for again. The Iono might up his chances of hitting it. Oh, did he actually have one in hand? Magnus, uh, well, basically had to play this Iono regardless oh, yeah. of what Marco had available. Of course. <laughs> yeah. He had nothing. <laughs> but retreat. Magnus led the turn with Ralts, expecting to knock top deck, and then found a decent card, and now can't use Bonetti X, even if they were able to draw into it. This is a pretty bad hand still. Still no access to Curlia, so not, not much more draw here. Just a bunch of energy cards. Counter catcher Counter is in really hand available. Much. There's a two energy iron hands which you can go after. Yeah. But it's just one more energy for arm press anyway, and that's all Marco is looking at. Yeah, but it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really change anything. You always hit the Arvin! 
Arvin is fun because what you oh okay what you could have done well you could have used Arvin to go yeah, future strategy could, capsule attached thank you to the very bench much. to get two prizes yeah I'm surprised we didn't actually that sounded really really good that maybe just, yeah just looking after your future boosters knowing you're already three prizes up perhaps is what uh, Marco's thinking just yeah. rationing these future boosters because they are so critical. I don't mind this, honestly. <laughs> doing, doing the hands. actions, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's coming. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I've always said I'm a very aggressive player, not in my mannerism, but in, you know, trying to take prizes quick and early. I think this probably was the better play because now you've got two iron hands that can help you very much in the future. Yeah. And you've got your Arvin ready for next turn. You've got a really good resource ready in hand. So oh, this is terrible for Magnus. He's just had no luck at all. We're going to have to use the memory skip from Roltz here to say, no to Ampi very much on the active Iron Hands, but Marco could still do the same thing that we mentioned in the last turn and just retreat into the next one. It doesn't even really matter though, because you need a one prize and a two prize. Like, oh, I can't Ampi very much. Fine, I'll arm press and Ampi very much next turn. Oh no. Like, it, it's not going to make you that sad. Oh, here's the electric generator, and it's one energy. That's all you needed. Now, both Iron Hands have four energy ready for that Ampi very much. Uh, I think we might be going to a game three in a minute here, Joe. It's looking likely. <laughs> because Marco is going to go down to just two prize cards. You imagine the arm press was uh, allowed by Magnus and not skipped by Roltz. So Marco can go down to two and be quite happy. Yeah, here comes a KO on the route, presumably with arm press. Yeah, you only choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks with the memory skip from Roltz. I mean, maybe they went amp maybe they went arm press hoping Marco whiffed an energy? Probably not. <laughs> But it's going to be Muyet's coming down for Marco as well. Oh, I love it. It's extra draw if there's an Iono, and it's a free retreat. Oh, there goes the hand. Very much, oh, yeah. he was hoping he didn't get the energy. Marco is now one prize away, so it was actually the arm press that was turned off. And yeah, Magnus Ma was, was hopeful. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. We've got absolute nothing going on for Magnus. More psych energy. Free energy, a nest ball, and a radiant Alakazam is not the hand you want when you're down by five prizes. And yeah. Yeah, Iron Hands doing Iron yeah. Hands things. Marco wins game two. We are headed to game three. That is how good Iron Hands is when your opponent gives you any leeway whatsoever. And we might have time for a game three at this rate. Didn't look likely after the situation in game one. It was such a long one, but Marco is straight back in it now. One game apiece, with I think around 10 minutes left on the clock as yeah, well. And we know exactly. it can take a ton of prizes all in one go. So yeah, it's a real game three coming in, Ross. And the thing to remember is when Tom time gets called, you have two turns. Now, if you are the player who's playing when time gets called, you get that and one more. If the other player, you just get two turns. But if you can take two prizes before time is called, that amp you very much can potentially give you two turns to win in time. So that 10 minute timer is a little bit false if you're the Iron Hands player. Sure. Because <laughs> you only actually need two prizes before time is called, assuming you've got the hand and the ball state to get you over the line. Correct. So yeah, this is going to be a full fledged game three here for our players. Magnus just had nothing, nothing working in that game too. We'll see how well his start is in this third game. I also wonder if he's chosen to go first or second as well, because giving the future player just the immediate access to peak acceleration is sometimes a risky strategy, but also then giving Iron Hands an extra turn attachment can also be risky. You can walk into a very much more, a little bit more easily. Yeah, letting your opponent go second basically means they're almost guaranteed to get them a ride on KO turn one. We've seen it both games. It's yeah. really easy to pull off. But letting your opponent go first means that you will get the first evolution before your opponent gets to attack. Yeah. But or it, it basically needs amp you very much. It's just so much easier because you've got two turns to get yeah. it rolling. Just a guaranteed attachment is such a big deal on Iron Hands. And we know that Magnus can deal with it, but kind of has to work around the Iron Hands and get prep damage and this, that, and the other. The prize cards are looking safe for both players right now. Churro is a bit of an important one for Magnus, but does play two copies. So... Yeah, it looks like Magnus chose to go second just to deny that easy peak acceleration play from Marco. And he's going straight away with the... Uh, with a turbo... Techno radar. Thank you, techno radar. And, I mean, assumably, Maraida on Iron Hands is what you would imagine we're getting here because you need an Iron Hands to get the energy on nice and early, and you've already got the Iron Crown. And with a 60 HP Rolts running around and the 60 HP Shop It rolling around, you don't need that second Iron Crown for a while. One yep. is enough for the early game. That would be what I'd expect as well from this techno radar. And yeah, if, you, if Marco does have that early lightning energy, you're just threatening so much for Magnus all over again. 
has a quick look through the prize cards, is more or less content, and will eventually find the best artwork of the Iron Hands yeah. X. That's something quite nice about the fact that Marco wants an Iron Hands, but when he gets to choose, he, he always goes for that artwork. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a nice way to be. But we are going to see the Iron Hands go down. There's no energy in hand, though. Ooh, OK, and that's a big break for Magnus, actually, because it's much more difficult for an amp on turn two now. It would mean a lot of generators going haywire. And Magnus has a good start. A lot of ball search here. Nest ball into Buddy Buddy Poffin. Yeah, seeing those two Buddy Buddy Poffin prize didn't actually really matter because there was already one yeah. in hand ready to go. So three basics coming down, two with 70 HP or less, and the third can be anyone. And yeah, it's, it's two routes and a chop it. <laughs> we obviously. just want the little chaps so we yeah. can make sure we can start working towards Gardevoir, but also have Bennett online for next turn. Seems pretty reasonable to me. I'm not sure if uh, Magnus has access to any supporters here. Has that huge suite of Iono in the list, as well as one research in here as well. We see some tracking shoes, so we can dig a little deeper. That's a Bennett that's much more useful later on in the game. So it is going to get discarded for now. I just had a quick gander at Marco's hand. I think all his supporters might be Arvin, and he has no Ooh. energy in hand right now. So, oh no, there is an Iono, okay. Because he needs an energy next turn for that Maridon. Mm. Like, Arvin for Future Booster and your electric generator is lovely, but you need an energy to mm. attack with. And if you draw, get an energy, then Arvin's great next turn. Yeah. Otherwise, you're kind of forced to Iono and hope. An easy discard there from Magnus on another <laughs> Trekking Shoe, getting rid of Spiritomb, not for this matchup, so nope. he's going to help out against the controlling builds and just is going to set up oh. his hand nicely and pass things over. Hits oh, it's a future booster pickup. That's a really good draw as well. Makes the Iono a much safer choice now. Yeah, means you can Iono knowing that you can retreat. You cannot play the Arvin here. It's got to be the Iono. Uh, it's a little bit upsetting, but if, the, if you just had an energy, Arvin would be a great play, <laughs> but you don't. Uh, at least you found the, the uh, future booster, so now you're just yeah. looking for and energy and you play 15 i'm feeling like we've got good odds here <laughs> you're probably gonna hit one that was a that was a worry playing the iron and whiffing the ancient boost he hit a psychic oh, i was gonna say I, know, like, I was like no. what is happening <laughs> wait no that's a goal you've only we so you whiffed all exactly 15 the psychic yeah you whiffed all 15 lightning but you hit the one psychic yeah double hit off you kind of knew you were going to get the double hit because <laughs> yeah. you just had your opening hand and the iron with no lightning energy yeah no surprise there we're getting a double hit on that electric generator so marco will be able to end his turn fully powering up one iron hands or having two partially ready to go is just going to fully charge one iron hands by the looks of things love this his hand is poor though yep beyond that he's pressurizing but it's not got much fuel after that one of the good thing and it's not it's not a perfect solution right but the fact that maridon takes two energy out of your deck means there's two fewer cards you don't want to draw into which does up your chances of hitting a supporter although we do see in the prizes free supporters prized is frankly not ideal <laughs> and they're all in the wrong place they're all towards the top and we think marco's going to take a lightning yes he does Passing things back over to Magnus then, will he start constructing the Bennett EX? And with this Ultra Ball, I think we have our answer. We're going to initiate the lock here with Bennett. Straight into the active, and then an Iono straight back to draw a fresh six cards. Was also able to evolve into a Curlier this turn, so we'll have more on the other side of this hand. There was a booster in hand, but actually the hand other than that was pretty terrible. Yeah. So the Iono might be helping out Marco here. Yeah, I think on balance, you kind of take that. There's no great counter catcher targets, so you're probably just poking the active at this point. No additional curlier is a shame. So your turn's pretty much just done there with a 30 damage prod from the Everlasting Darkness. And if I'm Marco, I want to play fast here. You're probably not taking a prize this turn. You're probably just poking into the bayonet with that Maridon. But you are going to have at least one, maybe two Iron Hands built up here. So you, you yeah, kind of want orders in hand. Is it tempting to find Curlier maybe and KO that? Do we have enough? Do we have any damage mod here? No, we don't. So yep. we are capped at 60. Yep. Yeah. Maybe you do just accept the poke here. Uh, I actually kind of want to Iono here as well. I don't love my hand. Ooh, interesting. Oh. It's got to be Flittle or Routes. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be the Routes. You we'll could go for the Curlier. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're locked in at 60 damage right now on the active. Maybe we, yeah, going to start powering up the Maridon in the active as well, saying, Magnus, if you just want to tickle this Maridon, <laughs> I'm going to get more aggressive with it. If you're just going to deal 30 damage a turn, I'm going to start using Sparking Strike. One of the problems we have here is that Marco is now down to one gusting card for the remainder of the game, 
and its prime catcher, which can be turned off yes. with Baynet. So I said about Marco potentially, oh, time's been called. I'll just take two prizes, two turns in a row. Well, if you've only got access to prime catcher, which your opponent can turn off, that actually makes mm. it a lot more awkward. There's two minutes remaining on the clock. Marco is down to four prizes as planned. But if that Baynet's not in range, Magnus can literally just be like, boom, no prime catcher. You can't win the game. Yeah. We'll see if that comes into Magnus's thinking here. Another Bennett, again, still safe. That doesn't change the situation. We're going to see Fittle getting into the mix again. <laughs> yes, Fattle is actually low-key quite helpful in this matchup. Obviously, a lot of these Pokémon are loaded up with attachments. Oh, wow, look at this. We're trying to get aggressive into the Iron Hands as quickly as possible here. Do we have access to this Espathra, or is Magnus looking towards that play? One of the things I think is important, Magnus has been paying attention this game, and Magnus is a very good player who knows deck lists. You probably suspect your opponent plays one boss's orders and one prime catcher, and you know Bayonet is out of range of Iron Hands. So there's no gusting. So Iron Hands in the active isn't KOing the bench to kind of force your opponent to have a Pokemon that isn't KOing you and isn't making the most of what it does. Do we see a way towards the Espathra here? I don't think I saw any Ultra Ball. Uh, can't it's see his hand well for enough. Magnus. I think didn't need much. There's already four energy on the active for Marco now. So it wouldn't have been much to ask for. No. So maybe you're still accepting a Bennett swing here. A single energy of Spaffer right now would be doing 180 damage. Yeah. Which is a decent chunk of damage. Yeah, possibly even more attachments from God of War EX before you find your um, Espathra, because obviously it's a grass type. But you can load up the fiddle a little, a little bit first. You absolutely can if you find you find the God of War EX first. Is it in hand? I think we've got the God of War EX. We're just lacking the ways towards Espathra. Yeah. It's going to be a quick super rod from Magnus getting some of those basics back. But I think maybe just to protect the option of Guard of War EX, you have to evolve out of your Perlia this turn, leaving you with not much draw. Yeah, I think Magnus has to make this play. I think you probably do. It's not, so it's it's uh, free energy on the Espafra you're looking for. Free energy on the Espafra, I believe, plus four on the Iron Hands, plus the 30 base, I believe is 240. So that will get the KO. But like you say, you cannot accelerate to the grass Espafra. You've yeah. got to make sure you get the energy on when it's still a flittle. But there's no gusting coming in from Marco here. Time has just been called. So, oh, who's turn zero then? That means that Marco is now turn one. So time expired during Magnus's turn there before announcing Everlasting Darkness. So Marco still has those two turns, but with this item lock... I don't think he can do it. There's no gusting. He may not be able to get four prizes in time, no. He's used his only boss. He can't use Prime Catcher. There's no power pad in the deck. It's not that kind of deck. I don't see how Marco can take four prizes in two turns. He can take three prizes, hit the bayonet, and then that'd be very much. That's fine. But you're not... I don't... I don't see a route for Marco to take four prizes. Stop yeah. me if I'm being silly here, You Joe. can see Marco, he's in the tank right now as well. <laughs> Is there any world reaching 250? Not going to happen. Let's have a look at any other resources. Is there any other way that I could lose now? Probably not, even with Radiant Alakazam shenanigans. Magnus can't win in two turns either. One turn. One turn. Because yeah. I was even, going to even less. Yeah. Magnus is not taking <laughs> six right, prizes right. in one turn. It ain't happening, Joe. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure we are at a tie here. I don't know, maybe one of the players is going to surprise us. They have access to more information than we do up here on the desk, but I, I cannot see a way that Marco is able to take four Especially prizes in this two hand. turns. Yeah. <laughs> and this isn't getting anywhere. No. You've just got two playable cards. One's a Lightning Energy and one's a Tool. Actually, well, yeah, there's two Tools, but one of them's really not doing much. Marco needs more gusting. That Baynet is putting in a shift. I think if this game goes a distance, I think Marco is still in a very good position, but that's a completely moot point right now. This game ain't going the distance. There's your future Easter Energy Capsule, which will allow you to retreat. And you, you can hit with Maridon and KO next turn, but... You're going to be one prize away from winning the game. And also, there's no way Magnus is going to leave an Ampu very much in range Baynet in the active anyway. Yeah, we're going through the motions a little bit here. We're going to try and Sparking Strike, I suppose, for 160. 
but Mag Magnus was fine. He's leaning back in his chair. As soon as that Iron Hands retreated, he was chilling. Yeah, yeah he's just announcing pass, I think. There's always that fear. Is my opponent playing a second boss's orders that I haven't seen yet? Is there any gusting available? But no, there, there isn't. There's a hand taken. Marco and Magnus go to a 1-1 tie in what was a very entertaining best of three. And I think if you're there, if you're Magnus, if you're the Iron Hands, 